I'm Anita of my Duke and I podcast and wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a wonderful day. And if you're seeing the show for the very first time, be sure to subscribe, like, and share and hit the notification bell. So when an episode comes out, you will be the first to know. So, um, a lot is going on in the, um, Sussex world as well as that British Royal family. But, um, I'm telling you, I have been, <laughs> today I almost died laughing. <laughs> it was so funny what happened to Chuck, but we'll talk about it later. But let's just start off with our Princess Megan. And um, uh, it, it, we just had our um, national election and um, Megan posted a picture on Atchwell and along with that she was encouraging people to go out and vote and if you text Archwell or a particular number you could find out your polling locations so you know kudos to our Duchess you know I I you know people are saying that Megan is going to run for office one day but I would just love to see that because she's one of those girls you know that you know, not only does she talk the talk, she does the walk. And we have a lot of politicians out there. All they're doing is, you know, they do talk, but it's cunning. It's a lot of rhetoric, and they're not really walking the walk. So wherever she runs for office, you know, um, well, of course, she lives in California, so she would be running over there. I don't know, but I'm picking up and I'm moving over there because I want to definitely vote for her. You know, everything that she's been involved with, she always put her heart and soul into it. We saw in England her patronages that she had out there. We saw she um, wrote, you know, a cookbook with um, the women of the hub community kitchen that she was involved with. And um, we also saw that for smart works she also did a clothing um capsule for them so whatever she does she goes in wholeheartedly you know so that's what i love about her so if she ever decides to run for office if she ever decides to get into politics i know she's good whatever it is whether it's a senator or even the president of the united states i know that you know if she ever gets to that position that she would be really really damn good at it because this girl she puts her heart and her soul and action actions into what she's doing you know she makes people's lives better and that is what i love about her so i'm telling you guys i will one day be moving to california if miss megan well not megan mark we don't talk about mark or for megan if our duchess or princess megan um, decide to run run for office <laughs> okay so um so um we heard that megan and harry had a date night recently so that was really good because you know the thing about it when you're raising children you have to take time out for yourself you have to take out some grown-up time for yourself so it's nice that they're doing that also too um the invictus um organization in germany they Put out a picture of when Harry and Meghan were in Germany in September and they had this all these people standing in front of this train and of course Harry had to everybody hand his dog but Harry can't keep his hand off Meghan <laughs> he can't keep his hand off Meghan he had to put his hand on her side there you know I'm like this is cuteness overload and this is what I like about them you know sometimes they're very serious but they're such a loving couple you know they're so connected and stuff like that so that was really cute I, I don't know if people saw that but I saw that I'm watching everything I scrutinize everything and nothing passed me <laughs> so that was really cute the man loves his wife and i don't blame him look at her you know she is so adorable she's so such a beautiful woman so what is not there to um you know to love or to desire you know so that was really cute and um 
So let's move on to Megan's um, podcast, Archetypes. And before I even say anything, today is the last day to vote for Archetypes. Um, voting ends at 11.59. So, um, you know, we want to make sure that, you know, we use up those last hours to vote for Archetypes. And you can vote at www.votepca dot com and vote for archetypes as the best podcast out there the people's choice bed best podcast and um the topic of her last episode um on tuesday was to be or not to be so she was talking about the b word and how women are labeled with the b word and most times the reason why they're labeled with the b word as she said here in this quote that i really really like she says labeling a woman the b word or is difficult is often a deflection a way to hide some of her really awesome qualities her persistence or strength or perseverance her strong opinion um, maybe even her resilience so you know sometimes when people um, you know, kind of get to you or you may have certain qualities um, that they desire or you may just be a strong person. They tend to, you know, name you the B word for that and stuff like that. So she had Victoria Jackson and Melody Hobson um, on the show and it was a beautiful conversation. Another thing also that she said was, of course, being called names hurt, you know, so, you know, sometimes we tend to say, oh, we don't care about what people say about us or the names that they call us. But really, in reality, we do care and it can be hurtful. And, you know, one thing she said is um, you can turn the, um, you know, you can turn those um, painful words and to fuel your purpose, you know. So she said that you can use that pain to fuel your purpose, whatever pain you feel from the negative words that was used to describe you, because people, um, they're not misjudging you. They just, I think sometimes you see a lot of why people call people the B word. The same thing that Megan said there, you know, there, and, and, and I, some of it, a lot of it is stemmed from jealousy. They see that you're successful, you're strong, you're ambitious, you're doing what you're doing, and you know, you know, a way to get to you or to take a jab at you is to call you the B word. So that was a really cool podcast. And we found out in that podcast that Megan absolutely loves Jeopardy, you know. She said when Alice, Alex Trebek passed away that people literally sent her condolences, um, cards, you know. And um, so... Uh, she really loves it. I used to watch Jeopardy. Um, I am not very good at it. I'm not good at the humanities, the literature section, the arts. I'm just not good at it. But I'm very good at the science and the um, the math par the math parts as well as the pop culture. But the other parts, I'm horrible at. I'm I'm just not good at it, and so on. So you know, speaking of um, condolences, I just want to express my condolences to Patricia Nixon. Um, I was told that she lost her one and only nephew. And um, I just want you, Patricia, to know that, you know, I'm praying for you and um, I'm thinking about you and to please accept my condolence, um, you know, in this very difficult time. Yes. So, um, you know, you have a big, big squad out there that really thinks a lot about you. That's the first thing that they said in the comments on my last video that I posted that you lost your nephew. So please accept my condolences. Okay. So, yes. So, um, one of the women that was on Megan's last podcast, um, I think her name was Alison Yarrow. She received a beautiful note from Megan. And you know, Megan has the most beautiful handwriting in the world. This girl can write. She has this, I'm telling you, it's like poetry on paper. That, that, that's how she writes. And I think um, she had, well, Megan um, did do that type of work 
calligraphy when she was a struggling actress out there and I think she also did Paula Patton's um, wedding invitation um, with um, Robin Thicke so you know she's made money writing like that for a living it's just really 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 beautiful everything is so perfect i don't know how she writes so straight if it's me i'd be going up like that instead of going this way and going <laughs> oh lord help me so all these women that were on her show of course they all you know are subscribers to her show and you know it's a really dynamic show talking about you know the the, the tropes that, um, you know, hold women back, you know, like what she just had, the B word and so on. And, um, you know, really, really good stuff. And um, what else again we found out? Yes, don't forget to vote for archetypes. Last chance you have to vote for archetypes as the top podcast. Um, um, so don't forget to go to www.vote um pca people's choice award dot com and cast your vote for archetypes okay you have until 11 15 and i'm going to try to put out that um episode so that you can see that and um so a lot is also going on with those crazies over there across the pond um members of the british royal family and um i don't know you know, <laughs> they came out during the time <laughs> of the passing of the Queen trying to ride, as I mentioned to you guys already, trying to ride on the wave of the Queen's passing. And they got a backlash out there. They came out there and people were booing them left, right and center. And they retreated, right? They went back into the drawing board or at the drawing board and see what is their new plan. And then now they went out there and this time I'm thinking it's worst. You know, one of the headlines that I saw out there said that um, William looked very, 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 very concerned, you know, his body language, they said, and this is the first time I'm be reading and believing a body language expert because they have a whole lot. I've never seen so many body language experts in one island like england but anyways this time i believe that one that picture that they showed of him there recently they said he looked troubled and he really does look troubled and um we saw um charles he went to this exhibition for um i think it was the lives of second generation west indians in leeds and you know i really don't understand why they're allowing any member of the royal family to come to their functions and to, you know to be part of those things because i am telling you look at what they did to megan one two um in general england is just a very 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 messy um island and the fact that you know charles has a big position in the government maybe not in terms of power but but in terms of presence and one of the things that they did was destroyed um you know people from the west indies people from the caribbean that came to england and worked in england that literally built up england they took all their documents that showed that they were from um that showed that they came to england and worked in england and they had you know contributed over there they destroyed all their documents and what did they do they turned around the government turned around and they were deporting these people that gave their all to england so those things really really upset me as a west indian so when i see um chuck when i see him in those places and you know people um kiki ha ha in with him it's it just it upsets me on different levels so yeah so that's really you know and another thing again that um i saw to a headline william was sort of discussing the importance of mental health with um you know the uk soccer stars and you know um heads of um fifa um world cup and i'm saying to myself wow william has some nerves william uh, sat there and literally contributed to Megan's, um, you know, 
the, the destruction of Megan's mental health. And I said, charity begins at home. If you cannot address or you cannot help the people that are within your home um, and you're going out there and saying that you're going to help these people, I think that you're nothing but a hypocrite because you contributed to somebody's mental health. You cannot help in your home and you're telling me that you're going to help out there. Mm -mm, I don't buy you, William. Bye. <laughs> Bye, William. You know, just a whole lot of mess with that royal family, I'm telling you. So we have Mike Tyndale going out there saying he's on reality TV. One thing I have to say, when Megan's docuseries comes out, I hope, well, not Megan only, Megan and Harry docuseries comes out, I, I hope they don't have anything to say. But you know what? I always tend to say Megan first because it's normally they dump on her. They really don't dump on Harry that much because they still believe Harry's their boy over there in England and he and Megan is not a unit so they tend to bid up on Megan and like give Harry a pass or blame Megan for whatever that is happening or trying to say that or they try to say that uh, Megan is the person that is causing Harry to do whatever um, they're doing as a couple. So, um, so I just hope that you know, they have the same energy um, for Mike Tyndale as they have for Harry and Meghan, which they will have. Um, <laughs> so we see that Camilla has her, what do they call that again? They call it the cipher. <laughs> so she she got her cipher and whatever they said um, here. I never heard of those things. It is, you know, in all those royal family kind of crazy stuff. This is where you pick up all those kinds of regalia and stuff like that. Things that, um, those antiquated things, those kinds of clothes they wear that you see Kate walk around with that makes her look like a granny. You know, like she living in some bygone era that she never left the 1,000 years ago or year, um, whatever it is, zero one. Now we're in what, um, 2022. She never left the zero one. <laughs> She's still back down there. But anyways, um, so they said that she has this new cipher. I know she really wants to use it. And she's scared because she knows that um, the, the tides are really changing for them. You know, people, more and more people are becoming vocal about the royal family because they just went to... Um, an outing um, to visit some, I don't know, some county, some place in England. And guess what happened? These people started throwing eggs at um, Camilla and Charles. And I almost died when I saw it. And one of the things they were saying is that, you know, they say God save the queen and or no, they're supposed to say God save the king. They will say, no, no, we're not saving the king. No, 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 save the king. You know, that's what they were saying out there, you know. Um, so, this, you know, it's like everything is so telling about what is about to happen to that royal family. No wonder William looks so troubled and worried because he knows that he had stayed you know he's been sitting all these years to become um king you know he's going to be like his father um maybe um he will be you know whatever age it is that um he is when that time comes and you know what i think he's worried about is that when he when that time comes it will be a no-go for him. So he's all worried about whether he's investing in something that's not going to be fruitful. That is what he's so worried about. He's seen all the signs. He's no fool. He's seen all the signs of what is happening. And, um, oh yeah, so one of the things that I wanted to talk about also that I saw recently is that, um, you know, the woman that accused... Um, Prince Andrew of, um, you know, sexual abuse um, is, you know, she also had a case against um, Alan Dershowitz, that big time attorney. And apparently she now um, is saying she had made a mistake when she claimed that, 
you know, she had um, intercourse with him, but I know he had filed a case against her and she had filed a case against him. I think his case was in response to the allegations or the case that she filed against him. So I don't know what type of settlement that was, but let me not say anything, but <laughs> I'm just going to move on. But let me tell you something. They definitely suck it to Charles over there. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I am telling you. You know, when you think about uh, Tampon Charlie that gets everything done for him, you should see the look on his face. How he then looking down at the egg on the ground, could not believe it. I'm telling you, it was just so frantic to watch the crazy that is happening over there with this family. And I'm telling you, I'm so happy Harry and Megan is out of there making their own way in life. That's why I say those children will be fine. They don't need no title. They'll be fine. You know, I think the title is to me, it's like a double edged sword. And, um, you know, I just like to see Harry and Meghan's children just move up in the world, rise in the world, like how Maya Angelou said, and just make a way for themselves and not be bothered with all of that nonsense um, that they have with that royal family. You know, just not be attached or tied down to them. That's what that those children need. <laughs> and by the way, the crown is starting and one thing I want to do is that I want to oh, I want to review it. Every time it comes out, I want to review it. I will be glued. Okay, today is um, Wednesday and it's premiering today. So let me go ahead and watch it. Okay, so um, Patricia Nixon, remember that my condolences goes out to you and your family during these difficult times. Okay. Bye, everybody, and take care. 